For the best audio experience, and to avoid embarrassment, we strongly suggest you use headphones whilst listening to Bubble and Squeak. Hi, I'm Peter Santoscano, and this is Bubble and Squeak, a podcast with uncanny sounds, funny interludes and stories, most weird, mini true. Okay, here's season three, episode two. Our show today comes in three parts, and it's best experienced with headphones. Part one, musician Scott Fowler talks about his evolving identity. Part two, Scott Fowler performs his song, The One. Part three, a sound slice from underground. Scott Fowler is a studio musician and a singer-songwriter. I met him through his parents, fellow Quakers in Wichita, Kansas. Like most of us, COVID changed Scott's life. It also changed the ways he lives it. I asked Scott about how he identifies, what life was like as a studio musician in LA, and about his life today in Colorado. Used to be Scott the musician. That was that was it. You know, I've been playing music for going on 17 years now, uh, I guess, quote unquote, professionally. So that was kind of everything. And then with the pandemic, it kind of pushed me in a direction which I was kind of already feeling, which is just Scott the human. Love playing music and writing, of course, but love doing things with my hands. So got into doing leatherworking and um, doing creative things of all sorts, being with people and learning and experiencing and traveling and uh, being active, um, that's a big part of who I am. So I don't know, whenever somebody asks, like, who am I? I'm, I give them that wide-eyed look of like, that's a very loaded question. I did a lot of touring <laughs> over the years, but definitely, definitely hundreds of hours in the studio, just being able to um, support a lot of different artists that are all super incredible and being able to just kind of dive into their you know, mind, like music for going on 17 years Pull now, out. kind of their intentions for the music that they'd written, which was an awesome experience just to kind of learn from my own self, beginning to write years ago for myself and how to structure all that and just the emotions that come along with being creative and vulnerable and uh, trying it to make it sound good. And, it. You know, I all love that good stuff. That could be soul music, that could be country music, that could be you know, pop music, music, that could be you know, anything that just 17 years, years now. The element of just having soul it's to it. It's not uncommon for me to leave my house at seven or eight in the morning and then not come home till after midnight just because I like being around people. Um, I love playing it and I have played it. The first band that I was ever in was a, a funk band, uh, and it's gone all the way to singer songwriter. That was very much gospel. kind of how LA was for me, um, and all over. I mean, I did a lot of recording um, in Dallas. Um, I've done recorded in, in different places, um, artists from all those genres. But since you mentioned the West Coast, just kind of you know brought back. I don't know if I could of, really um, identify a single one that going stands out. out I think a lot of my um, it all is musical music at the end of the roots. Day. And as far I as love being able to musical to roots, dive into that experience and then people take it I, for what it's uh, worth you know grew up playing with and stuff a lot of them moved out there and so I'd uh, get to go out there and play shows and do these you know I've been playing music for massively going long on 17 uh, years now. sessions you know where uh you're in the studio for 10 hours and then you come you're out in the and you're like for 10 hours and by the light and you haven't like eaten and you're blinded just like, by the light and I just haven't eaten and then you're just like, what did I just come that out of? That being awesome in the, in hindsight, you know, it's like that was amazing. And then listening back to this incredible music that we were able to. Yeah. Create. I love, I love, yeah. I love I the love, studio. I, love, I haven't been in it in a while. I love while. the studio. I haven't been in it in a while. Um, but it's definitely been a fond part of, of kind of my musical you career know, as they would music say. for, going on 17 years now 10 hours and then you come out and you're just like blinded by the light and you haven't eaten and you're just like it sounds like i'm taking light of it but it was it almost was refreshing to just slow down and be more intentional about um about myself i think more so than anything because the more and more i i learned i i realized that i uh I have no weight or not much weight at, at the least um, on the rest of the world. And all I can really control is myself and my 
my interactions with other people and, and how I carry myself. And I, I tend to just try and lean and believe in that, that that's where, um, um, true change comes is at this micro level of it then beginning to permeate. Um, because yeah, if I, if I had started thinking about the, the big grand scheme and the way things are going and, and the, this, an overwhelming anxiety and energy that is kind of just prevalent within, uh, our culture, it, it can get you down, uh, uh, really easily. And I don't like to be down. <laughs> so I, I try to find those pockets of light that kind of help me move forward. Um, and then if I'm in a good space, then I, I think I can, I can create and enact more change, um, just in being who I am. So this song and a couple others that I was able to record was all me, which was kind of scary. So this one I play guitar on, which is my main instrument. I believe I played, played bass on this one as well. And my brother and I did some of the production, putting together the drums and all the textural stuff that kind of fills out all the frequencies. I think I remember just sitting on the end of the bed the morning that I started writing this. That opening kind of guitar part was just like a mood, you know? It felt good, it felt dark, it felt heavy, and it felt like it needed something um, to come from that. And so then that kind of spurred into the first line, uh, which is very heavy and dark, and then it just kind of brought this whole idea. And then from there, the music just kind of transpired. Um, and yeah, it does go from minor during the verses into major during the chorus. Probably that's my optimism coming through in terms of just being aware and being able to sit in this heavy space
let me set the scene for you. I'm on the N train, heading underground from Manhattan, New York to Brooklyn. My friend George Ferrandi will offer a performance art event called Maybe the Sun. It's a facilitated experience for just seven other people, and it's designed to help us reflect on life during the COVID-19 pandemic. The train is packed with people speaking at least five different languages. 50% of the people have masks on. Life feels sort of, kind of, maybe almost not quite normal. Squeak is written and produced by me, Peterson Toscano. I mostly make the show for me and my friend Tammy, who is a survivor. The Bubble and Squeak theme song is Worthless by the Jelly Rocks from the album Bang and Whimper. You can find it on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to music. You also heard The One by Scott Fowler. Hear more of Scott's original music and sign up for his refreshingly simple newsletter. Visit scottfowlermusic.com. You can follow my friend, the performance artist, George Ferrandi, on Instagram at jumpstarlove. To find more great music and new podcasts, visit rockcandyrecordings.com. And you can find me on TikTok or walking around Sunbury, Pennsylvania. Oh, and thanks for listening. For more shows like this one, visit rockcandyrecordings.com.